نفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده لا فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we know that Allah is deserving of that praise in connection to the reality of his perfection and his greatness his grandeur and his majesty and we know that this day is established for us to be reminded by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah to put in this gathering the barakah so that we can be reminded of that which will benefit us in this life and in the hereafter. And indeed, from among the affairs that we may overlook and we might not give full consideration to, in all of our desire for Islam, in all of our desire to practice Islam, in all of our ambition to be Muslim and to learn how to be Muslim, from among the things that we may overlook is that we do not live in the land of the Muslims. We do not live in the land of the Muslims. So there are so many things that are in opposition to that which we aspire to or that which we should be aspiring to. And there are so many things that by default they hinder us from the realization that we have to work hard we have to strive and we can't allow ourselves to be distracted and we can't allow ourselves to be complacent as we live in this land that so many things are going to be in opposition to what is pleasing to Allah. And so many things are in opposition to what we find established in the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. So as Muslims, it's upon us to purify ourselves. And we all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَا مَنْ تَزَكَّى The one who purifies himself, they do that which, by way of it, they will be purified. They are the ones who are successful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his legislation, no matter where we are, no matter where we reside, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated that by which the Muslim is to be distinct. The one who Allah has guided is to be distinct in his or her qualities and characteristics, in their speech, in their appearance. They are to be distinct. They are to be upon that path 
of the one who is unique. And indeed, they should house, they should hold unique qualities and characteristics. So from among those affairs that took place at the time of the Prophet wasallam, is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated the hijrah, granted the Muslims the success in the route, in the room, in the land, in the freedom to establish the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within themselves and to establish the religion of Allah between each other, between themselves and to establish that which is an Islamic community. Allah gave them the ability to do that. Not the Islamic community that is struggling, but the Islamic community that is successful. And from among the things that took place when they first went, they prayed in the same direction as the Jews and the Christians. They all prayed in the direction of Beit al-Maqdis. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he legislated from the great distinctions of Islam is that we face the Qibla, we face the Kaaba. We face the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in that city that he was born in. And he was safe and secure in that city in which he lived and resided. And then Allah gifted him with Islam and made him a prophet and a messenger. And that safety and security, it was removed from him because of the hatred of the people. The hatred that developed for what he was calling the people to. The hatred that the people had for him because he was turning away from the religion of their forefathers. And he was turning away from the people. And he was calling the people to that by which they turned away from the religion of their forefathers. And other than this. So we was once safe in that city. And he loved that city, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he was no longer safe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him safety in another location. But it was not just the Muslims that lived there. They lived in the area and they lived amongst Kufar. They lived amongst Kufar. But we can say it because Allah gave them the izzah that the Kufar lived amongst them. And that's the difference between what we experienced and what they experienced. They had the izzah. The kuffar were living with them. We don't have the izzah. We don't have that honor. But rather the kuffar have that honor that's connected to ownership. That's connected to tahkim, being able to establish rules and regulations. They have that. We are the ones who are low in this land as it relates to people and the status of people. But we're not low as it relates to Iman. We're not low as it relates to faith. But we will never rise up. We will never be raised up until we claim that faith. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ That Allah, He raises up those who believe from among you. So we will never be raised up to that virtuous status of Iman until we claim Iman, until we hold on to Iman, until we learn what Iman is and we live upon it. Even though we live amongst the kuffar, we adhere to it. Even though our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, they're not with us. They're not with us. Not because we don't want them with us, but Allah did not guide them to what he guided us to. 
So we shouldn't thirst for what they have. We shouldn't be afraid to move forward. We shouldn't be scared to let go of that which we were upon before Allah guided us to Islam. Because we live here. But Allah is calling us to the Dar es Salaam. Allah is calling us to the place of peace. The home of peace, El Jannah. The paradise. The religion of Allah is facilitating a path for whoever wants it to get to the place of peace. Paradise. But we become distracted. Because the systems, the land, the people, it's not going to remind us. We're not going to be reminded. And the more we stay away from one another, the less we're going to be reminded. And from, the among, from among the affairs that have affected in the way that they live, the way that they establish their religion, is that they don't frequently, consistently, Establish that which is legislated upon them. If they can find that which is legislated upon them. If they can understand that which is legislated upon them. But indeed they have gone astray. But indeed they are lost. Even though they claim to be from among the Jews. Even though they claim to be from among the Christians. And then we have those who don't claim anything. They think they have no God. That's the people we live amongst. So how will we be reminded of our Lord if there are people who don't believe that they have a Lord who are in control of our affairs? It's all the more reason why we need one another. We need to spend time with one another. Not here and there, not in the passing, but in the house of Allah. In the house of Allah. In this masjid. The one that you come to every Friday. But then we don't see each other. Be aware that this is the methodology. This is what the shaitan has tricked and called. And this is from the da'wah of the Nasara. They go to church and we know it because we were raised in it. We've seen our mothers, our aunts, our uncles, our grandmothers. We've seen it. They go one day and they feel they rejoice and they'll fall out on the floor or they'll yell and they'll holler and they'll feel like they've established the worship to their Lord. And they've not established anything pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've not established one thing that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not in going to that church, not in hooting and hollering and singing and tapping on this instrument and playing that instrument. They haven't achieved one thing that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when they leave, they feel good. They feel like they've achieved their ibadah. And we can't fall into that, that we come here on one day and we leave and we never return until the next week. And we feel as though we've established our ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the Christians are astray. This is from their qualities and characteristics. And we ask ourselves, are any of the qualities and characteristics of the Christians which is connected to them being astray, or the people of the book, connected to them being astray, connected to Allah being angry with them, or any of those qualities and characteristics praiseworthy? No, they're not. Are any one of those qualities and characteristics a praiseworthy example? Can we put forth something and paint a pretty picture about what they do in the effort to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, we cannot. We'll call it Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Laysa lana mathalu saw. He said that we, meaning the Muslim, the believers, if we're really upon that, no one can come forth 
and describe us with any type of evil similitude whatsoever. The Muslim cannot be upon the religion of Allah and be described with something evil. The Muslim cannot be upon the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and be described with something evil. And that person who's describing them be truthful. But rather, if anyone were to describe any one of us, then it should be with something evil, and it should be that they are lying upon us. But unfortunately, they might not be lying upon us. Because we don't see and we don't understand the reality. Let go of all of that that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from. You didn't know. And he guided you to that which you know. That which will help you know what to do, what to not do, what is good for you, what is bad for you. Allah guided us to that. He didn't guide them to that. Don't mimic them. Because indeed, we can start describing them. One, one, two, three. We can go on down a list and we can find evil ways to describe them. Donkeys, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, carrying books on their backs. Mules. Laboring. Struggling. To no benefit to themselves. That which they are holding, that which they are carrying, that effort that they're putting forth, no benefit to themselves. Wearing themselves down. Because they don't want to uphold the amanah. And indeed the amanah has been lost because now the amanah is with the Muslims who are upon that which the Prophet ﷺ came with. We have the trust. We have that which is a benefit to the people. Nobody else has it. So we can't keep looking around. We can't keep being fooled and not seeing our reality. Leave that. Leave them. Come here. Come be with your brothers. Be with your sisters. Build a community. But no, we keep running that way and that way and that way. And every Friday we come in, we look good, we smell good, and we leave and we don't see you. That looks like the Christians. You come once a week. You look good. You smell good. We love to see each other. But that's the only time we see you. That looks like the Christians. That's what they do. We've been called to establish the salah five times a day in the masjid la shakafi if we have the ability to do to. If we have the ability to do it. And if we can't make it, we better make sure between us and Allah that that excuse is real. That excuse is real. So don't be like those who rejoice. And they're not establishing the worship of Allah in a manner in which he's pleased with. Don't be like them. Because that's where we live. A bunch of people not establishing the worship of Allah. Thinking that they're establishing the worship of Allah. That's the reminder. That's where we are. That's where we live. What do we want? It's our choice. لا إكراه في الدين قال الله عز وجل. There's no forcing anybody in the religion. You want to go do that? You want to go do that? You want to smoke? You want to drink? You want to fornicate? Go do it. Not going to force you in the religion. But rest assured, you're going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who are you going to look like on that day? Are you going to look like the believer? Or are you going to look like the disbeliever? Are you going to look like the Muslim? Or are you going to look like the Christian? What are you going to look like? That's our reality. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave these examples. So that we can see what they look like. And what we're supposed to look like. And then we can choose. That which is afdal. That which is best. That which is most virtuous. And what is it? Illa deen illahi ta'ala. Except the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's more virtuous than the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What they have. Is that more virtuous? What's more virtuous than the sunnah of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? 
what their people have made up and imagined and fixated their hearts upon a falsehood and corruption, disease, treachery, greed, fornication, intoxication, murder, stealing. Because that's what they do. And they say it's okay. As long as what they do doesn't bother me, it's okay. That's their religion. That's their idea. That's their thoughts. That that evil is okay. Is that the position of the Muslim? Is that the position of the believer? That we say what Allah said is not okay, it's okay. That we say what the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said is evil, we say it's only evil, it's not evil, as long as they keep it away from us. Is that how we judge? And we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where we live. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. It's all against us until we establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all against us until we establish the brotherhood the way that it's legislated to be established. It's all against us until we visit the masjid the way that we're supposed to visit the masjid. It's all against us until we establish the manners and the etiquettes that we're supposed to establish. It's all against us. All of it. So don't follow it. Subhanallah. Bismillah. Was salatu was salam wa ala rasulillah. Wa ba'id. And regarding that qibla, regarding the changing of the qibla, it's a number of ayat in the book of Allah. But from among them, let's ponder over these words, this reality established in the book of Allah. Call Allah Azza wa Jal. وَلَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودَ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ That the Jews and the Christians, they won't be pleased with you. They won't be satisfied with you. They won't find contentment in your reality of being a Muslim. They won't find contentment within the reality of you being a Muslim. They won't find contentment with the reality of you being a Muslim. Until you follow their way. Until you do things the way that they do it. Then they'll be satisfied. Then they'll be satisfied. You're not enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. How can we be enjoying the good and forbidding the evil if we're doing what they're doing? And what they're doing is evil. They can't be satisfied if we're establishing the truth because it's against them. It's not what they're upon. It's not what they love. It's not what they have a passion for. And then Allah, he continues. قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى That's their ambition. That might be what they're calling you to. That might be what they're trying to influence you with. Come this way. Don't go all the way into Islam. Keep one foot over here. Don't put both feet in your religion. Do it this way a little bit. Compromise. Take your time. Don't go. Stay a little longer upon this falsehood. Stay a little longer upon this error. Stay a little longer upon these desires. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Kul inna huda, huda Allah al huda. But say to them, those individuals, the guidance of Allah, that's the guidance. Indeed, the guidance of Allah, that's the guidance. No one can guide anyone. But the guidance that comes from Allah, that's guidance. After that, no one can guide anyone. After that, no one's upon guidance. And then Allah continues. Allah 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, وَإِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And if you follow their desires, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِي مِنْ بَعْدِ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ After what has come to you of knowledge, if you follow their desires, after what has come to you of knowledge, that's the difference. That's the Furqan. What we are supposed to be upon is ilm min rabbil alameen. It's knowledge from the Lord of all that exists. What they are upon is desires, fiction, falsehood, conjecture. No foundation. No proof. No evidence. And if you bring their book, you'll find proof against them before you find proof for them. You'll find proof in their own books against them rather than finding proof for them. They're not upon knowledge. They're following their desires. And if you follow their desires, after what has come to you of knowledge, look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And understand, he's speaking specifically to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which includes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, But it means his whole ummah. Means everyone who is upon the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is the this is the Allah saying you, but not taqsis is not specifically and restricted to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But rather it's for his whole ummah. Everyone who is upon the Sunnah, everyone who's claiming to be upon the Sunnah, everyone who is submitted to Allah in Islam. If you follow their desires, after what has come to you of knowledge, malaka, you will not have anyone after Allah who is going to befriend you. You will not have anyone after Allah who is going to befriend you, who is going to take care and manage your affairs and look after your affairs for you. And you're not going to have anyone after Allah who is going to help and assist you. This is what Allah said about his actions. This is what Allah said about his actions. If you follow what they are upon, their desires, after this knowledge, you won't find anyone who to befriend you after other than Allah. You won't find anyone who is going to be able to be entrusted with that compared that friendship after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that relationship other than after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no one who's going to be someone who helps and assists you to be successful, to be victorious within yourself, within your homes, within your community. You won't get aid and assistance if you follow what they are upon. And this is the reality. So let us not be fooled. This is not the land of Islam. You're not going to bump into a salam here and a salam here. And, it's, and, the, and the meaning of it is intended. A dozen people may say salam, who Allah has not guided to Islam. They may understand that speech. They may understand it as a high and by statement. But they don't say it صالح, with a sound intent. Dua on Mubarak as a, as a blessed supplication. They don't want you to be safe. They don't know what safety and security is. So don't think because you can walk up and down the street and someone says salam and you return a salam, but they're not Muslim. Or you can't tell if they're Muslim. That's not the reality. We want the salam. We want to experience the salam. We want to grow, develop, and be built up upon the salam. Because what? Allah, he calls us to what? Darul salam. He calls us to the home of salam. So we don't want someone's desires. We don't want falsehood. We don't want pretend. We don't want fiction. We want facts, truth, unadulterated. But if we're doing it one day, if we're doing this one day, Then rest assured, there's no other description other than we are resembling the Christians. There's no other description. Because we don't find the Prophet wasallam. we don't find the Sahaba one day visiting the masjid. One day. Driving past it, walking past it, never coming in. Except one day. We don't find that being the truth. 
We don't find that being knowledge. We find that being desires. So don't follow it because we won't be helped. We won't have anyone to befriend us, anyone to entrust our affairs to after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we want to be upon that. We ask Allah to safeguard us from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of shaitan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaika. Akinna as-salam.